Yo, what's up guys? This is Lil Crip here, bringing you guys a new video. And in this video, we're gonna be reacting to the new Rainbow Six Siege updates. <laughs> and I'm laughing about that, cause obviously you know, there's a cripple in the game. <laughs> It's my own Rainbow Six Siege operator. <laughs> I can't, I actually, like, I, I don't, I've not seen anything about this. So I, I'm like, I'm excited. It, let's just get right into this video because it's a long video. It's 30 minutes long. Hello, everyone, and welcome Hello. to Operation Twin Shells. Howdy. I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway, and it's time to hear straight from the developers themselves all about Year 9, Season 3 of Rainbow Six Siege. All right. This season brings an innovative new operator and a versatile a new cripple. weapon. Let's yeah. get it off with an overview of the season. Let's go, baby. Creative Let's director, go. Let's go. Alexander Karpazes. It's all about Operation Twin Shells. Yeah, don't make but it shit. Jump Twin Shells, hmm. I wonder how they came up with that. Hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. At the exception, New Blood. And we want to new Blood was ass. that we are dedicated to this game and that we are, are sure? putting more resources than ever into it. Operation Twin Shells is all about the new operator as well. Scripples. This is Kiri Galanos, who's one of the original operators from Rainbow Six. And she comes with two shells that Oh she my can gosh! This is a testament to the creativity <laughs> of the game and the talent of our team. It's a cripple! Unique <laughs> operators like this that are still game changers. We're also introducing updates to anti-cheat and anti-toxicity. About time! Which is like Take those siege fucking cup. hackers out of here. Beta phase. You cheaters. Have, you guys are shitters. We can't wait to dig into it. So let's begin. Let's talk about an important topic right off the bat. Cheating and toxicity are yeah. not just concerns for you. Dude, they are cheating and toxicity? You all that ruin the game, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for your asses to be banned. Maybe you shouldn't be cheating in a video game. No lives. <laughs> Some people are gonna be in the comments like, oh my god, all you do is just make videos all day. You're having no life. <laughs> Bro, what else am I gonna do? Hate some more, dickheads. I don't care. What do you hate my laugh too? Now, to share exclusive details and updates on the current and upcoming player protection project. Layer protection. More than just battle eye, we have six detection systems running at any given time, and we're constantly improving these systems. Okay. Binary hardening is the act of obfuscating and making it harder for cheat makers to access the game. Think of it like a giant library where a cheat maker is trying to find a specific book. We'll be trying to change that book's location as much as possible. And even on top of that, changing what? the shelves and the entire library so that it's as confusing. In the end, they cannot effectively make cheats for our game. When it comes to oh, Siege Cup, that, for those that have that, won, Okay, wait a minute, cheated, wait a minute. Let's go back for a second. I get it. Because people are figuring out ways to get around the system. They're making it more random. Is that, I, I, that's basically what I'm getting at. Harder. When it comes to Siege Cup, for those that have won and have cheated, they will be banned. Oh. But of course, their teammates will have access revoked from Siege Cup as well. It's now a multidisciplinary team that is actually one of the largest in-house anti-cheat teams in the world for any given project. And for us, that means oh, you guys are we're totally fucked. dedicated <laughs> to making sure that Siege is the best it can. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Drone Boost is a new feature coming to our attacker lineup. Drone Boost. The goal here is to continue to reinforce our attackers. Intel is king in Siege, and keeping our drone alive Whoa. is crucial to getting that intel. Some of the changes we did to Solus helped with that, oh. but we wanted to go further. We want to give more power to our That's players, sick. specifically the attackers. The drone's so gonna drone have boost extra speed. You actually boost your drone a maximum of three times, three seconds per boost. You can cancel it mid boost. Quickly evade, quickly close distances, and each boost once expended, takes six seconds to recharge. I like so that. So it's similar to Maverick's Torch in the sense that you can cancel the action at Yo. any time and it doesn't fully deplete the We're only gonna so be speeding around in our drones. <laughs> again, I don't know how else to put this. Now there's a cripple and now you're gonna be able to zoom zoom around with your drone going six miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the clutches from Bravo or even Twitch's drone can also take advantage of it's like a mini wheelchair <laughs> or power chair I should say and they're like, still charging like the one left. I got the key factor is there gonna be a recliner drone? mode on it <laughs> so the future of drones and siege is really focused on their economy it means making sure they can survive longer if you like competition this next update is for you new siege cup beta is coming this season for select players to test their five stacks 
an intense Ooh. tournament play. Oh, hell us. yeah. Yo, I, I know a couple of my boys are watching this. We gotta do this. We have to do this. We gotta fucking shit on some players. Dude, this is lit. A League of Legends has something like this. I, I thought it once before. It's like a, okay, hold on. I'll just let, I'll. We made the decision to restrict Siege Cup Beta PC platform because we can be much more reactive. If something happens with the Siege Cup, we can address it much faster Dude. than with other platforms. Yes. <laughs> we really want to it's launch exactly Siege what I was thinking. in full form in year nine season four. That's why having a beta to make sure we can register the oh, squads. Yo, what if you could do this in custom games? Yo, 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 nah, nah, nah. This has to be in custom games as well. Like there's gotta be a bracket system that they have to add in custom games because it'll make custom games even better. Like bro, imagine creativity that could, holy moly, that would be so sick. But obviously in custom games, only downside to that is you gotta make sure you got enough players. <laughs> So now that I think about that, I don't think enough, I don't like all the friends that used to play Siege, some of them don't play Siege. There would be a possibility that this wouldn't work anyway. I, I feel like that would be sick no matter what anyways for like big content creators. Like, yeah, dude, nah. Formulate the brackets. And you know who exactly I'm, which content creators. Oh, wait, you have to register? Oh, that's gay. You have to register as a five stack. The question arises, which operators will be targeted for balancing and how will they change? Plus, spoilers. Don't fuck it up. It's Solus, Dokabi, and no. Excuse my language. And Dokabi, what? Huh? Implementing the second round of changes for Solis. Changes for Solis is based in three pillars. The first pillar is the detection mechanic. Now Solis will use only the center of the screen to detect the gadgets, and those gadgets will be unidentified. You won't know what they are. The second pillar is the scanning or identification mechanic. Scanning now mechanic. we call it overclock, and once you trigger the overclock, your energy is refilled and you'll be able to see every gadget in the center of the screen as identified. You, okay, you'll know what so, they are. So you'll be able to identify exactly what they are now. They're gonna be in the center of the screen. Okay. And once and you trigger the overclock, your energy is refilled and you'll be able to see every gadget in the center of the screen as Isn't identified. technically a you, buff You'll know what they are. Aside from that, Solis will emit a warning to every observation tool in the enemy team within the range of detection. So they will know oh. that you are overclocking and that you are seeing their gadgets. The oh. third pillar is the energy access. Now Solis spec IO will last longer and will require less energy to be activated while reloading. Okay. Tokaevi right now can generate a lot of pressures in defenders, specifically at the beginning of the round. That's why we're taking a look to the resource management in her ability. Now, Doka will start with zero charges at the beginning of the round and will get one every 45 seconds, but only up to two per round. These changes should reduce the pressure on defenders now. They should have more time to prepare their setup. Players like will be that. encouraged to survive longer to have a greater impact. It's actually in pretty match. balanced. Global abilities like Doka Evi's Logic Bomb have a great impact in the game and sometimes with little effort from the players. We are aware of this and we will take a look at it in the future, being part of bigger changes for the game. So Nock is receiving a buff. We think that camera scrubbing and Intel Deception is how stealth should look in Rainbow. The changes we are making are affecting how Nock's ability consumes energy. Instead of being time-based, they will be action-based. That means that some actions like walking won't consume any of your energy, but if you sprint or shoot, your energy will be consumed. These changes aim to make Nock more patient. We want Nock to be better at flank watching. We want them to feel like there's a monster in the house. Nock and Smokes. FMG9 is getting a buff. We are reviewing its recoil to make it more comfortable when you're shooting at longer distances, specifically when you're using magnified scopes. The objective of these changes is to improve the player perception and balance of those operators while keeping the frustrations away. There will be more changes in this season. Okay. For example, we're taking a look at the proximity alarm and its synergy with Ooh. sentry, and also at the delayed timer for explosions on the claymore. Delayed? What? Why would you delay the, the claymore explosion? It's a claymore. What? I, I don't know. I agree with that. <laughs> They're making it way too As easy then. Now, it's now time to talk about the new opera. All right, here we go. Scopos. Here we go. This Greek defense of Purple. tactical possibilities to the fight for twin shells. Talos and Colossus. For insight into the visual huh? design of this operator, we'll hear from art director Joanna Sui. And for a breakdown of the new gameplay opportunities Woo! she offers, We'll go to game designer Justin Laranger Alualia. Okay. Let's do this. Oh my goodness, this is a cripple. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
What? What was that? So this is from Ravenshield era and her Kuri's uh, Galactic. Damn. Really based off of her um, story background um, and the trauma that she went through. In the anime that was released from the year 9 season 1, in the mission uh, there was Daniel Bogard and uh, Jared Morris at that time trying to stop the bomb maker. In the end, you uh, see a giant explosion and it was actually exactly that moment where she stopped being able to walk. Ever since then, she's a wheelchair user. She's been in a relentless chase trying to seek prosecution oh to stop Damos. All that toll effect on her face. She looks very gaunt. She has eye bags, wrinkles, and wear and tear. Scopos what the is fuck? a master strategist. Uh, she adapted her wheelchair into her command center like a pilot seat. She uses the shells to be part oh, of the that's action. In game, you can hear her, you can see her face when you swap between the two shells. When we're designing her no. uh, wheelchair and the robots, Yo, we really have- This is so sick! Bro, this is- Oh, no way. This is actually cool as fuck. Like sitting behind a fucking Nintendo Switch. I'm, I'm actually geeking, bro. <laughs> I can actually play a cripple operator, dude. This is actually insane, bro. I'm geeking. <laughs> oh my gosh, this game is fucking awesome. Bro, what if they're gonna have a cripple? No, in other games, bro. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, let, let me watch this. I'm just geeking. So we went old technology look. We really want to establish the fact that it's not smart AI robots. They're not invincible. They can be destroyed. Uh, when she loses Talos, Colossus, she's losing a part of her again. So for the design of the robots, um, we wanted to differentiate the two so you can identify them easily on the field. The difference are in the antennas, the shoulder pads, and colors and patterns are distinct to one another. We made sure to have the analog look by physically having buttons that you can push, wires that you can see, and they're not touch screens, they're not holograms, they are something that you can touch and feel. Back when she was a field agent, Kyure surveyed the area from afar as a sniper. Now, she still watches from a distance, but in a different way. Thanks to her new tech, Scopos is able to maintain a wide network of control unlike any other defender. That's because what Scopos brings to the field is not one, but two remotely controlled robotic operators. Make up the V10 Pantheon system. At any given moment, one of Scopos' shells will be in an active state, where it functions like an operator, while the other remains in an idle state, where it functions like a powerful piece of defensive utility. Allows her to swap the states of these shells, quickly delivering offensive or defensive power where it's needed most. Scopos' active shell works much like any other operator. It can move, shoot, and use gadgets. It's also Scopos' primary lifeline. If a shell is destroyed while it's active, Kyuri's link is severed, and she's functionally dead for the rest of the round. Two bodies does not mean two lives. Meanwhile, oh, Scopos' idle shell I like take that. on the defense, deploying an integrated shield that functions much like a deployable shield secondary gadget. While in this state, the idle shell can be used as an observation tool by Kyure wow. and her allies. Additionally, Wait, what? Scopos can act that, that is so sick, so it's acting like another gadget? Deploying an integrated shield that functions much like a deployable shield secondary gadget. Additionally, Scopos can access her idle shell's camera directly at any time. While Scopos is looking through her idle shell's camera, she'll have the option to swap shells. Activating the swap sequence will put her active shell into idle mode, put her idle shell into active mode. The only catch is that the active shell needs to be in a position where it can deploy its shield to perform the swap. Scopos's HUD has an indicator that'll make this easier. Information about both shells, including whether the idle shell is under attack or being affected by an EMP. Strong Scopos player so, is one that makes frequent use of her idle shell. So it's not and like it's too overpowered. So you can swap between each one. When you swap between the other one, the one that you're currently using goes into a state where they can't be used and it, and it acts like a deployable shield. So then your other op, it's like a normal siege operator. But then when you swap, it does the same thing. It goes into like an idle mode and then it acts like another deployable shield and a camera for your teammates. That's, that's actually kind of clever. Scopos is a very tactically oriented operator that requires players to collect data and quickly act on it to maximize her potential. A strong Scopos player is one that makes frequent use of her idle shell to guide the actions of her active shell. For most players, cool. Scopos will likely be a shallow roamer, operating near the bomb site while having the means to extend into a deeper roam or fall back and anchor as needed. Having the combined properties of a deployable shield and a bulletproof camera this shield can offer a large amount of oh. intel from relative safety. Oh. Scopos is idle That is sick. Is most yes, I'm going to be more of a support player for my friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, it's going to feel like it's so siege. cool. It's like going to feel like I'm actually playing like Rainbow Six in some kind of a way. Because <laughs> she's looking at a Nintendo Switch screen. <laughs> the PCX-33 assault rifle. 
Kyure may not be bringing a sniper rifle into battle, but make no mistake, her shells are still packing some serious firepower. This weapon is precise, deadly, and heavily customizable, making it a versatile tool for a versatile defender. This Scopos sounds carries a P229, naughty. a Woo! throwback in the Greek Sounds like forces. a beastly gun. Scopos also has access to secondary gadgets. These are shared between her two shells. Her first option is impact grenades, a great choice to maximize her mobility and roaming potential. Alternatively, Scopos can bring proximity alarms. Oh. These synergize great with her idle shell, helping her know exactly the right time to take action. The Pantheon shells are two health, two speed operators, having been built for a balance between durability and mobility. It's actually Within kind of broken. Unique nature, Scopos' shells have a few special interactions. A good rule of thumb is to think of her active shell as an operator and her idle shell as a gadget. The first interaction is EMPs and gadgets that target electronic devices, like IQ. While Scopos' shells are electronic, an active countermeasure that protects it from anti-electronic effects. It won't completely stop them, but it will prevent Scopos' active shell from being fully disabled by an EMP. Makes sense. This protection doesn't extend to the idle shell, however. Disabling effects will prevent Scopos from using the camera and swap features. That's Is pretty dopey. fair. Uh-oh. The hacker's calls are a threat to any roamer, but they also block Scopos' strongest escape plan. Oh, shit. Additionally, Dokubi's universal hack can give her team access to the idle shell's camera. Oh, Drama's no. Can overheat Scopos' idle shell. However, this takes a while and gives Kyure a warning on her HUD. If she's fast enough, Scopos can swap to activate her countermeasures and prevent the overheat. In addition to being an electronic gadget, Scopos' idle shell Ow. can be destroyed with explosives, leaving the idle shell exposed for an oh, easy kill. Oh shit. The glass also be shattered. That's not good. Preventing wow, so this operator is gonna have a huge skill ceiling. Holy moly, they're really getting creative with this. That's crazy. So she benefits greatly from allies who protect her from them. Catchers like Jaeger and Wamai can protect her idle shell from explosives. And other denial gadgets, like those from Mute, Mozzie, and Tubrow, can stop many of Scopos' greatest enemies. Being okay. made of metal, Scopos' shells can't benefit from healing effects. Doc's stims, Thunderbird's Kona stations, and Rook's armor won't help the shells. What? They also can't get put in a down state, and they don't breathe meaning they're immune to toxic effects like smoke and Fenrir. It can open the floor to some aggressive hey, combos. Hey, wow, that's, I really like that. And a little bit of realism. That's cool, because obviously you're not going to be affected by smoke. <laughs> Don't be dumb, you're a robot. <laughs> so it's like, that makes sense. So she's not broken, but she, is she seems broken. But then now that, you, you know, because Bravo Jones can disable the robots for a little bit, uh, the EMPs do that, so that, that's pretty cool. Another strong approach to Scopos is to double down on intel. Maestro, Valkyrie, and Echo can offer more insight into enemy positions and even provide some distractions. That can be more than enough to let Scopos get into position and go for the kill. Scopos is designed uh -huh. to embody the key aspects of being a defender, gathering information and swiftly responding to attacker strategies. Scopos brings a level of adaptability that, if left unchecked, can turn the tide on even the strongest of attacks. We'll be keeping a close eye on her in the test server and throughout the season to see what players can do with her. Yeah, she can be broken and not broken. <laughs> but you'll probably recognize his voice as he's a big part of the Siege community. It's Marley and he's here to give you his own special brand of insight into the new operator, new balancing updates, and all that Operation Twin Shells has to offer. First impression of the new operator was definitely, oh, they've broken the game, this is it. But then when you see how it actually plays, it's amazing, it's mind blowing, and it's definitely the most versatile operator on defense. And hoping everybody walks right past it and then switching to the shell when needs be. And uh, yeah, the rest <laughs> is counter. Xbox that I on. <laughs> definitely feel like a big issue. If you're leaving your body somewhere, it's gonna get destroyed. The balancing changes Oof. this season have got me really excited. Who will I want to challenge in the 1v1 custom match? <laughs> what a silly question. Jinxie, I'm ready. They just... Exciting <laughs> season. Damn, they called out Jinxie. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for this. <laughs> Bringing what I think is one of the Whoa. most exciting operators I've seen in a long time. Yes. I can't wait to see all the fun and different plays coming from people. Yes, sir. And that's the full rundown for Operation Twin Shells, which is hitting the season test server tomorrow. Whoa. Jump in and see how Scopus, Talus, and Colossus Whoa. change the way you defend the site. And I'm as excited. always, remember I'm so you encounter while playing to R6 Fix. All right, well, that is Twin Shells, ladies and gentlemen.
They actually did quite a bit. New operator, player protection, balancing, the Siege Cup, 1v1 custom playlist, after action report, so 2.0, I don't know why they have to call it 2.0 everything. It's just a new action report. <laughs> Versus AI, drone boost, I like that. That's really nice. And then shooting range and matchmaking. Wow, that's actually some solid changes. So, well guys, that is the new season. You already know, because I'm a cripple. I'm hopping on this shit. Oh yeah. I actually might even get the battle pass. I could just get it right away, because then I'm not gonna wait two days. Like, I wanna be able to play this right away. And I don't wanna be like, oh yeah, sorry guys. Oh, here's the new operation. Oh, but I'm not playing the new operator. <laughs> So I think I'm actually going to get the battle pass. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, drop a like. Subscribe, please. Always helps out. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day. Good night. Peace out, guys.